Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. The story that we're going to talk about is Three Children of Fortune. Pow! Now we're in the story, and there's an old man, and he has three sons. And this old man, he's about to die, and he knows it. And he is like, he brings his three sons to to his bedside, I guess, and he's like, I got some, I got, I don't have much, and, you know, I want to give you something that you probably can't find any use in them, but I want you to go out and I'll make your fortune off of it. The items that I have for each of you is a rooster, a scythe, and a cat. These three th- children of fortune are from a farm. Those are the things that I have for you kids. Now, I want you to go make your wealth off of them. They don't have a lot of value, it seems, but you can. You, I want you to... F- it all matter, or it all depends on how you use your rooster, your scythe, and your cat. The eldest son, he's the older, so obviously he's got the rooster, and he goes on his journey. The the middle son with the scythe, and he goes on his journey. The little run of the 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 group, he's the cat. Um, a rooster is a, a rooster, obviously. Obviously. Okay, so in this story, he needs to go find a place in the mainland that has never laid eyes on a rooster before. So he's going through the mainland and he can't find a place that has never seen a rooster. Like, everybody in the mainland loves rooster. They see no wonder in, in uh, in this bird. Well, up until now, they've never even needed to use a rooster before. So, so he I, he's, feels pretty much with his rooster. And then he goes off. Yeah, I guess he gets on a boat. And goes to an island that's nearby. To Kahawali. Uh He goes to this island, and they have never seen a rooster in their lives. So that so much so they'd never seen a rooster. They they couldn't even tell the time. Like they didn't know how to divide their time. And he goes, uh, "I've got this bird. Look at the awesome rooster I got." That's what he says. Look, what a proud creature! It has ruby red crown on it upon its head and wears spurs like a knight. It calls you three times during the night. It fixed hours. And when it calls for the last time, the sun moon rises. But if it crows by broad daylight, then take notice, for there will certainly be a change of the weather. <laughs> There was a trial period, or I guess a demonstration, yeah. And and the guy had to show everybody his rooster um, and and what it can do. His rooster is very multi-talented. It would crow at 2 in the morning, 4 in the morning, and 6 in the morning and wake them up. This village has a problem. And what the problem was, they wouldn't sleep through the night. And then if they woke up in the middle of the night, they wouldn't know what time it was. Before the day began, they didn't know, like, if the weather was going to change. So this rooster was able to tell them in the middle of the night what time it was, and then also tell them when the weather was going to change. But how erect it was. (laughs) It just, like, puffs up his chest. It's like, dude, guess what? A cock will do. -do -do. I just crowed. They were like, we've never seen anything like that before. It... It, wow, it does all that? It's like, I just gotta have it. Please. Be, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you can have my rooster for as much gold as you can fit in my ass. On my ass. They gave him his ass, and they put gold on top of it. Because he's like, I want as much gold as my ass can carry. <laughs> he's got an ass and some gold. Brought it home to his brothers. Brothers like, dude, you did a good job. Uh, I'm next. <laughs> and the middle brother's to like, I'm going to go try it now. So the middle brother, who has the scythe, he decides he wants to also make this for- fortune. He's like, you made a lot of money. I want some money too, bro. Yeah, so then he goes into the village. But 
everyone's seen a scythe there. They all know what it is. They all know what it does. They all work in the farms. They're very familiar. So then that didn't pan out for him. So he too goes to the island. So he goes to the island and he notices that people are plowing or whatever, cropping with a cannon. So they're ruining their crops. Blasting through their ears of corn. Yeah. But also they're blasting out their ears because it was so loud. They deal with lots of snake oil salesmen on this island. So, you know, they would be definitely be, you know, so, you know, requiring him to put on a demonstration. So then he yeah. goes out and does his demonstration with the scythe <laughs> to show <laughs> to show how to get the corn more efficiently, that it works a lot better. Yeah. And so they're like, oh my gosh. So then they want the scythe. And so they ask him what he wants for it. So yeah, he said... Food. As much as a horse can carry, which is a little bit more than an ass, than that, than his, his big brother's ass. His big brother's ass can fit a lot of gold, but not as much as a horse. <laughs> so then he goes back to his brothers with his fortune, and they're all excited, like, "Yay! That's my turn, the little brother." He's like, "Dude, my brothers just got a bunch of gold in their asses." Let me try. I got a cat. Let's see what, what this can bring me. I can fit so much gold in my cat. <laughs> so, yeah, the, all the other places, all the other towns that his brothers frequented, you know, same sort of ordeal. They knew about rooster. They knew about scythe. They knew about cats. Yeah, yeah. cats is everywhere. If there's a rooster around. You know, this is farmland. Those are the three essential things you need on each farm. We got plenty of it around here. All right? One just crossed cross in front of you. It was carrying a dead mouse. We don't need any cats. All right? In fact, we sometimes when cats get pregnant and they have little baby cats, we just take those baby cats and we put them inside the pond. So you know, he brings the cat to Kahuluawe and... Same and there's a king. We didn't know about the king in this in this village, but now there's a king. Everybody again, like the rooster, like the scythe. You know, it's, they've never seen cat before. They were plagued yeah. with mice, right? Yeah. yeah. In fact, the the mice had overrun the entire village of Kahualal. So he took the he took, the cat to demonstrate. You no, know, he was demonstrating to the town and the king that you know, the cat can you know. Take care of your rat problem. The king was also infested by these m mice and rats, and they would like, they would, they didn't give a f about anybody. It didn't matter if you were home or not. The mice would jump on your tables and dance around on your benches. That's how bad the rat problem was. Mm -hmm. And then the the cat comes yeah, in this, in this, this demonstration. This, yes, this one cat in the king's the palace. It takes starts just eliminating all these mice, the, you know, these rats. It looked like two rooms full. Yeah. He was like, yeah, this is not all this cat can do. You know, they're amazed that the, the cat can do one thing, and then the guy's like, oh, you think that you think you like that, huh? Let me show you, I'll show you what else my cat can do. And they get excited, and then he's just like, well, that's not all. It also is great, you know, when you throw balls of yarn at it. But it'll cost you a bunch of, a bunch of, Monies. You're going to have to give me way more gold than my brothers. They give him the fortune. You know, it's it's twice, it's twice. It's three times as big as his older and brothers. And it fits in a mule. So a mule at this point is like a, a, a drug mule can fit a ton of gold in his butt. <laughs> so the community's got this cat they, you know, they're still very f unfamiliar with. Um, so this, so this cat has eaten so much mice that it's thirsty. This whole time eating a whole island worth of mice is and devouring. is now suddenly feeling thirsty. Because that's in mice. cat language, though, you know, in, in you know human language, it came off as meow. So that's scary to a bunch of people that never seen a cat. So it's the king that's afraid of it. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he's like, oh, this cat is going to eat me because it goes meow, meow. And he's like, demon spawn. He's like, everybody, everybody, <laughs> leave the castle. We must, we must figure out what to do with this monster. 
Yeah, and I think they decided to, oh my God, burn it. Yeah. They ran away from the castle, and the king was like, we got to figure out what to do with this cat. We, let's send a messenger to the cat and see if it'll leave peaceably. Because uh, if it won't, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to use force. Yeah. So they tried communicating with the cat. Of course, the cat's just meow. Send the boy. And meow mews. He he interprets the mew mew as he yelled at me. <laughs> you bro. <laughs> it was a yell. I just need some something to drink. <laughs> How's yeah, it? So he runs back to the king and he tells him that the yeah. cat said yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> this cat was like, dude. I swear this cat was like you to me so it needs to die cat he's not working here here's a torch kahuale uh was like all right well since we're not using the cannon for our corn anymore let's go <laughs> grab it and take this castle down they go they revert back to their old technology to try to <laughs> fix it so they launch a bunch of cannonballs at this castle and the cat's like all right well obviously they're not going to give me something to drink so i'm bailing and then he jumps out the window just like whatever, and then they launch cannonballs through the castle. This is Hawaii, you know. It's volcanic, you know. I know I'm not gonna hang around here with on fire. They tear down the castles and gone. And they it, destroyed themselves. And the cat got away and lived happily ever after. Don't be scared of cats, bro. I think that's the end. That is the yep. end of the three children of fortune. We'll close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.